Our next topic is wheat fertility, timing, and application. Well, whether we're talking about winter wheat or spring wheat, right now is a good time to be thinking about what you're going to do for nutrition out there. If you're talking about spring wheat, we need to start looking at the soil tests and seeing what that's calling for and getting a good idea of what we're going to need overall for total fertility. With winter wheat, we've already got some fertilizer out there from the well, fall. We hope. <laughs> yeah, we hope we do, and we probably do. And now in the spring, it's going to be, all right, let's execute the rest of our plan. So let's start on that winter wheat thing. We definitely hope that you soil tested last fall, you applied P and K, micronutrients, all those types of things. But here's our recommendation early in the spring. It's getting at least a little bit of nitrogen out there to get a good early boost, get good recovery coming out of that winter. Usually we would recommend that you do this with stream bars. So there are a lot of people who will do foliar and if you're going to do that you got to put a lot of water with that. On our farm we've got tram lines out there and run these stream bars, putting some nitrogen out. Whenever we put nitrogen out we're usually throwing six to 8% sulfur along with it. In other words, of our mix, our total mix. The other thing would be micronutrients. If you didn't do that last fall, we would probably recommend throwing a quart, quart and a half of micronutrients out, blended micronutrients. That usually helps give you a boost in the spring as well. Hey, I want to get into this nitrogen discussion just a little bit. How much nitrogen is coming free from organic matter? Will it come free in time to help this year's crop? Well, with organic matter, it's going to mineralize throughout the course of the summer, but it doesn't happen until things heat up. Many times it's early enough to help us with protein, but maybe not early enough to help us with big time yield. So to Darren's point here, for uh, you know talking about this organic matter, yes, you're going to get some free nitrogen, 20 to 30 pounds of free nitrogen for every 1% of organic matter. That's over right. the whole season. So maybe instead of figuring 20 to 30, maybe you figure 15 or something like that. Well, it's no, I wouldn't even figure less. that. I wouldn't even figure that. You're not going to get that. So it all depends on the area of the country you're in. Just understand that much of this is going to come through the mid to late summer timing. So it's not going to help you out as much as you'd probably like on the wheat. So you got to have a good nitrogen program there, not just for yield, but also for protein later in the year. Okay, the other thing with nitrogen before we leave that topic, when we're thinking about spring wheat now, we get the question all the time, should I just put all my fertility out at planting time or should I save some of it for later? If we put a whole bunch of nitrogen out right at planting time, we're gonna end up with more tillering rather than more growth and we end up putting a lot of our energy just into producing tillers rather than putting on ahead. To Darren's point, yeah, if more goes into vegetative, then you might have a little bit less that's available later for protein. So I'd rather split it up too. The other big thing is, if you haven't done this, soil test, look at your cation exchange capacity number. The other thing is we strongly encourage you, use nitrogen stabilizers. They help keep nitrogen in the ammonium form, which is better for the plant, and it's more stable and not leachable. Okay, another challenge, Brian, and I'll pose it as a question to you, is nutrient stratification. For guys with wheat, a lot of the fertilizer gets done in a broadcast manner, yep. and much of that fertilizer is concentrated in the top inch of soil. Yep, so we still encourage you, even if you're a wheat farmer, even if you're in seven or 10 inch rows to band your fertilizer and place it down in the soil where it needs to be four to six maybe even 10 inches deep with your phosphorus that's where it's safest well one last thing we'd really like to encourage you take some plant tissue analysis throughout the season what you get from plant tissue analysis it'll tell you what nutrients your crop is short on on that time that way if you need to do a little bit of foliar feeding that's a good indication or if you're running short in nitrogen you know hey i need to do some stream barring out there if i want to have high yields and high protein or it helps you learn for next year what can i tweak in my fertility program to make it better and the big thing that i would leave you with is make sure you're soil testing and then not just soil testing but learn how to read the soil test make the right adjustments and take a look at the ag phd fertilizer removal app to see how much in terms of each individual nutrient your wheat crop actually needs to get good yields well, another important thing if you want good wheat yields is controlling our wheat of the week we'll tell you how to stop it coming up next